No problem. In accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, be advised that notice of this meeting was made by posting on the bulletin board in town hall and mailing to the officially designated newspapers a list of the meeting dates annually, indicating that this meeting would take place on Monday, November 2nd, 2020 at 7 p.m. Due to the COVID-19 virus and mandatory quarantines imposed under executive orders by Governor Philip D. Murphy, Millburn Town Hall is closed to the public for the purpose of board meetings. Supplemental notice was given in addition to the annual notice due to the transformation of this meeting into a remote virtual meeting. The supplemental notice contained information <clears throat> necessary for members of the public to attend the meeting through the Zoom platform, both by audio and or video means. The public will have the same opportunity to participate at the appropriate time virtually, just as if they were attending an in-person meeting. The supplemental notice was posted on the Milburn Township website Milburn Town Hall Bulletin Board and Milburn Town Hall Front Door. Supplemental notice was also forwarded to the item and the Star Ledger, which publications are the official newspapers for the Township of Milburn. Thank you. Mary McNett? Here. Craig Fletner? Here. Jody Sharma? Here. Steve Toger? Here. Wolfgang Tutoris? Here. Kevin Lindell? Here. Chairman Joseph Steinberg? Here. Uh, I should make an announcement at the very beginning. There are only two applications that are going to be heard tonight. Uh, Nine Deerfield Road, Berkowitz, and 102 Cypress Street, Tiaji. Those are the only two applications that will be heard tonight. There was one more scheduled but uh, that matter is going to get a new date at another time. So if you're here for any matter other than those two applications, I should say, if you're here for any other application other than the two applications I just mentioned, the, the, your matters that you're here on will not be heard tonight. All right, the first thing we're gonna to do tonight is deal with the minutes. And Mary, you was, thank you very much. You went over the minutes and you had some changes and those were delivered to Eileen and Eileen, those have been made, yes? Yes. And these are the minutes for which meeting? August 17th. Uh, are there any other changes, additions, or corrections to the minutes of August 17? If not, is there a motion to accept those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. No. Who was that, Craig? Yes. Craig. You weren't at that. And that's for a show oh. of hands. I uh, ask for a show of hands. All in favor? Hey, I need a second. Steve. Okay, got it. Thank you. Steve seconded. Okay. Show of hands. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Craig? I wasn't there. Was oh, there. you weren't there. Okay. Um, the minutes are approved. Now we have two resolutions tonight. The first is a so-called emergency resolution. Eileen, would you tell the board a little bit about what this resolution? Wait, which ones are you doing first? You're doing, okay, hold on. Okay, the emergency regulations resolution is required because we had to adopt certain standards due to the fact that we've gone to a virtual mode of meeting. So it establishes um, the, I guess the, the new statutory requirements as far as what can and can't happen and how we have to notify the newspapers and post. And you said at that out. Of, at the end of September, the Department of Community Affairs issued new regulations um, for remote meetings. And so they mandated certain things and, and the adoption of this resolution 
governing how we deal with public comment during remote meetings and the notice requirements is all specified in those new regulations. And a copy of this resolution was sent out today, is that right? Yes. This is the same resolution that was adopted by the planning board. Um, I just said to Eileen, let's do the same one so that it's convenient for her. She's not dealing with different regulations for different boards. And I think Mary, you had a couple of changes in the resolution, right? I did. Planning board. Planning, planning board was stricken and board of adjustment was inserted. Correct. All right, is there a motion to adopt this resolution? I move adoption of the resolution for emergency regulations. Is there a second? Second. second. Jody, I think seconded it first. Okay, you want to call the roll? Mary McNett? Yes. Craig Kletner? Yes. Jody Sharma? Yes. Lee Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Kevin Wenzel? Yes. Joseph Steinberg? Yes. Eileen Jensen is here. I, I just joined as well. Okay. Well, okay. Hi, Jess. Hi. Sorry, parent parent teacher conference ran late. That's okay. Kids first, <laughs> always. Okay. The next and last resolution is re required because, as we all know, Gail Fraser, despite all kinds of pressure <laughs> put on her, is intent on resigning and retiring from the practice of law at the end of this year. So we needed a uh, professional services resolution that was again uh, sent out by Eileen to everyone. Are there any additions or corrections to that resolution? If not, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. I'll second. I'll second. Mary McNett? Yes. Craig yes. Yes. Lee yes. Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Glatt? Yes. Joseph Steinberg? Yes. Okay. I think that takes care of the. No, Joe, there's two memorializing resolutions. Well, there's two memorializing resolutions, right. Uh, Zhao Ying. Was, what was the name of the case? I think it was Zhao Ying on Meadowbrook Road, 29 Meadow, Meadow, Meadowbrook. Right. Uh, is there, are there any additions or corrections to the Meadowbrook Road resolution? If not, is there a motion to adopt it? Move approval, calendar 3756-20. Jessica made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Mary McNett? Mary. Yes. Craig Kletner? Yes. Jody Sharma? Yes. Jessica Glatt? Yes. Joseph Steinberg? Yes. And there's one more resolution. And what was the address of that? 72 Myrtle. 759, it's Carpenter Mansfield. And right. the address is 72 Myrtle Avenue. We all remember that one, I think. Uh, is there, are there any additions or corrections to that memorializing resolution? If not, is there a motion to adopt the memorializing resolution? Motion to approve calendar 3759-20. Is there a second? Second. Yes, you just second. Mary McNett? Yes. Craig Kletner? Yes. Jody Sharma? Yes. Steve Toger? Yes. Jessica Glatt? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Now we're going to take to take up the two uh, applications that are before the board tonight. The first is Linda and Ira Berkowitz at 9 Deerfield Road. Is there anyone appearing on behalf? Yes, of the I'm bringing over their architect and Mrs. Berkowitz. Um, is there, and I'll wait till she comes on. Is there anyone else that I should bring over? There's somebody co who called in and there's somebody, Brian Sullivan. Are I don't know if either one of those people are here on this application. Is there anyone else here on this application? If you are, please raise your hand. We're here. No, oh, want them to oh sorry. Do you see anyone, Eileen? No, they're not raising, so it's just the architect and the applicants. All right. Ms. Ryman, am I, Cologne Ryman, am I saying that correctly? Muted. You have to unmute. Okay. You're muted. You're still muted. Right I know. I'm Eileen and I called in. Can I use the call in, not the audio on the computer? We can we hear are, you. Rather we, can hear you. we are hearing you, but you're interrupted. I'm going to mute the computer. See, tell me if you can still hear me. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's better. My my computer audio. You're just gonna keep freezing. Oh, it's terrible. Now you're frozen. You're freezing. I'm freezing. But can you hear me though clearly? We can hear you. Not when you freeze up. When you freeze. We can hear you until you freeze. All right. Let me. Give me a minute and let me, um, I'll move locations. We'll try it. Why don't you meet Linda and Ira? Okay, hold on. get a tour of my house. Okay, we need for you to give us the benefit or you're frozen again. Now you're okay. She is relocating to another location in her home. So just give her a minute to get settled. Does it seem better here? So far, so good. So far. Ms. Berkowitz, you're going to have to unmute so you can be sworn in. Yes, OK. I don't know where we miss. Meredith, okay. are you still there? I'm here. I'm sorry. I was just changing the lighting so you could see me. OK, so uh, Eric, you want to swear the witness? Yep. In? If, if everyone who's going to um, testify would raise their right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you give in tonight's Zoom hearing to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Let's right, who's gonna go just first? state your names for the record. Linda Berkowitz. Ira Berkowitz. Meredith Colin Ryman. Right, who's who's going to lead off? Meredith. Meredith. Uh, I'm going to speak on behalf of Ira and Linda. All right, uh, Meredith, uh, if I can call you by your first name, would you please please give us the benefit of your education, your background, and your experience as an architect? Sure. Um, I'm a licensed architect in New York and New Jersey. I, I hear. I hear. 
and myself. Is that unusual? <laughs> like I hear everything I say right after I say I say it. Probably. I'm going to change the audio. You're, Hold you're on. Getting the echo from your computer or something, but we're not hearing that. We're hearing only you. Okay, maybe. Maybe if I'm in better Wi-Fi, it'll be better. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can, yes. Okay, I'm disconnecting the call. I'm sorry. Sorry for my, I've never done a Zoom variants before, so hopefully this will be better. Okay. Um, okay, I'm a licensed architect. I'm licensed in New York and New Jersey. I've appeared before this board many times. I've appeared before many local boards. Um, Livingston, am I frozen? <laughs> yeah, you, you, froze, you freeze and you unfreeze. Now you're frozen. Now I'm frozen. Hey, Mike, can you get me your laptop? I'll keep going. My husband's laptop is faster than mine and I'll switch over, but we'll keep trying until he switches it. Um, okay. Anyway, um, I went to, I have a master's degree in architecture from Georgia Tech. Um, I've been licensed for, for 15 years. Um, what else do you need to know? Does that help? I have my own That's practice good. based in Livingston. Is that good? You, your, your qualifications are accepted as a licensed oh. architect by this board. Proceed. Okay, I want to start off by apologizing. I put the wrong number on the application. These are new to me, and I will not fill out an application without them ever again. I'm, a, I'm just accepting that I have to wear them at all times. Thank you, Mike. Just put it here, Bob. I think it's okay. Yeah, no, all right, just leave it. So I am, yeah, I'm just going to try. If I freeze again, I'll switch over computers. Okay. Um, should I do a screen share? Is that the best thing? Is that what people normally do to sh present the drawings or you guys have them yes. all in front of you? I'm not really sure yes. what, they is that the best thing to do? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to yeah. do a screen share. And I will um, open our drawings. Great. Sorry, Mike. Okay. <clears throat> the Berkowitz residence is an existing Cape Cod home originally constructed in 1937. It's beautifully sited on its lot. I'll zoom in. Everyone should have these in front of them, but I'll zoom in for here. We're proposing to add a two-story addition on the north side of the house to expand the small family room on the first floor and to add a master bedroom, master bathroom on the second floor. That's over here on this side of the property. <clears throat> the house is located in the R5 zone. The lot area is 11,500 square feet. The lot width is 75 feet. We're seeking three variances tonight. One for side yard setback, for a structure up to 18 feet, one for additional side yard setback, and one for combined side yard setback. Two of the three of which are existing non-conforming conditions. The side yard setback for structures up to 18 feet requirement is 12 feet in the zone. The existing condition, which we are not worsening, is 10.7 feet, and the proposed condition is also 10.7 feet. The variance that we're seeking is 1.3 feet. The additional side yard setback, which the requirement is 0.33 feet for every foot over 18 feet, um, the height of the building on this side is 22 feet 10 inches, so the variance that we're seeking is 2.9 feet. And the combined side yard setback, the requirement in this R5 zone is 35 percent, 
which uh, is 33.6 feet on a 75 foot wide lot. The existing condition, which uh, is um, existing non-conforming is 30.9%, which is 23.2 feet. And our proposed condition is the same, which is 30.9%, also 23.2 feet, which is a proposed, um, which is a variance, sorry, of 4.1%. <clears throat> the proposed project meets all other zoning requirements. The reason to, to support the petitioner's claim of right of relief are as follows. The most common type of variance hearing for, in front of the Zoning Board of Adjustments is a variance from the bulk and dimensional requirements of the ordinance, referred to as a C variance or a bulk variance. This is commonly requested in the variance in town. <clears throat> Sorry, there's dinner being made in the background. <clears throat> Generally associated with construction of a single family dwelling, accessory structure, and additions. When building or expanding, a C variance may be needed because of the existing constraints to the property, the size, the area, the shape, or topography conditions, the house itself, any of these things could prevent compliance with the zoning regulations for the property. This neighborhood in Short Hills, the Exeter neighborhood, has many houses that do not conform to the side yard setback requirements of the zone, our application included. Two of the three variances we're seeking are existing nonconformities. This home has only one small bathroom. Well, let me just go to the, let me just go to the last page before I continue on. You can see a lot of the, in a lot of the neighborhoods, I'm, I'm sure some of you actually drove by today, even though you maybe couldn't get in through, but a lot of the houses in the neighborhood are very, very close to each other um, in terms of the side yard, um, where they sit, or how close they sit to one another in terms of um, proximity to the neighbor. I think you all should have a copy of this drawing. This house and this house are very, very close. This is all, um, on Deerfield, Deerfield, almost all, every one of these pictures are on Deerfield Road. <clears throat> this home has only one small bathroom on the second floor. I'll go to the existing. This is the addition. So you can see here, this is the one existing bathroom on the second floor right now. The homeowners have decided after living in this house for many years that they wanted to add a master bathroom, which is a common addition in the neighborhood and throughout the town. Even with the proposed addition that we're proposing today, the, um, and the undersized lot for the zone, they're still significantly under on gross floor area. They could add another 1,250 square feet with this addition and still be under gross floor area on the lot. We seek three C1 hardship variances by reason of an extraordinary and exceptional situation uniquely affecting the structure, which is the location of the existing den, which has an existing slab that we want to reuse for the new addition. This existing slab sits within the existing side yard already. We're not worsening the side yard condition by moving any closer to the side neighbor. We're keeping the side yard condition exactly where it is. We did thoroughly study ways to add the bathroom on the second floor without requiring any variances, but it did not work. <clears throat> Within the existing layout of the rooms on the first floor, the patio, or it, it greatly reduced the light coming into the master bedroom on the second floor. Our goal was to minimize the effect of the, on the remainder of the house. We tried to keep costs to a minimum. We wanted to reuse as much of the existing structure as possible while really trying to find a place for a second bathroom up on the uh, second floor. The existing house is already non-conforming to the side yard setback on this side of the addition. We're not worsening the condition on the side, as I've said several times. 
The neighbor on the side of the proposed addition is facing another street and already has two uh, already has a two story structure very close to our side yard on this side of the home. We tried to be respectful and only added clear story windows on this facade. Let me go to the facades. These windows are up very high. They're like the sill is up at about um, almost six feet. So all we're doing really is just letting light in and looking out at the sky. We're not looking at our neighbor at all. We can't really, you know, you can't see directly out. You have to be like six, five or something to be able to look directly out those windows. But nobody, no offense, Ira and Linda, nobody in that house is six, five. <clears throat> so we did try to be very respectful and only added clear story windows on this facade. So not to look directly into the neighbor, but to allow light into our new bathroom. There's also several large mature trees on the side of the property which shield the addition from its neighbor. The positive criteria um, is as follows. The overall appearance of the house will be improved. The addition will serve to balance the front elevation and make the house more in keeping with other houses in the neighborhood. Many other houses in this neighborhood have undergone similar and many more extensive improvements. The proposed statistics of number of stories, building height, building coverage, lot coverage, front and near yard setback, gross floor area, all conform to the requirements of the zone. The addition will be inconsistent in style and building materials with the original house. And the benefits of the addition outweigh any detriments. And we feel that the board can grant this variance without any negative effect on the neighborhood. Any questions? All right. Can you now stop sharing so we can get everybody's picture back on the screen? Sure. Let me see if I can know how to do that. I don't, I don't think I know how to do that. Oh, stop share. OK. There we are. OK, you asked if there were questions. There board go. members, Board members, do you have any questions? Raise your hands if you do. Well, I have a question. Yes, Gail. Um, in the photographs and in the survey, the photograph on the survey, I believe there's a large um, bush that is currently blocking that first store, first floor den, correct? And I'm assuming that gigantic bush is going to be removed as part of what's happening on the property. Is that true? Ms. Frazier, my com can, can you just say it again? Because my, my computer went out. You said there's a large bush in front of the, and that's all I heard. I, I believe there's currently a large bush in front of the existing den. And I think what you're proposing to do is to bring this new addition forward, closer yes. to the front of the property. And I'm assuming when that happens, you are going to eliminate that large Bush. I don't know, but I'm asking that question because you just put up a front elevation that shows some sort of evergreen on the side, but it's not showing that large gigantic bush that's blocking the existing one story den. Right. Hold on. Let me, I'm just pulling up the photographs. I mean, I'm, you know, that bush is. is fairly far forward of the front of the house. So I'm not exactly sure. I, my answer is I don't really know if we have to lose it or not. It oh, may okay. be lost. We're not doing a full foundation. We're building it on split. So um, it's to be determined, I guess. Because when I look at the photographs um, of Nine Deer Deerfield, the front facade of Nine Deerfield, and you can't even really see the den right now because it looks like it's concealed by that big bush. I mean, maybe that's not true. Right. Well, the den is set back right now. Right. And we're pulling it forward. But there's a there's air conditioning equipment there right now. We okay. And that that bush is is like forward of that. It's forward and off to the left a little bit of that. So well, that bush may um, stay. It, it may, I mean, it's, Are your it's possible. It's just hard to tell. I mean, we don't have a, we don't, I don't have like shrubbery located on my drawings. 
So it's hard to say. I mean, it's a possibility. It's, you know, it's, it's a maybe. Okay. I'm only asking because the front facade that you just put up in your plans yeah. So large evergreen to the right of the proposed addition right. does not include that existing shrub. So Mrs. Berkowitz, can you unmute, unmute yourself and tell us what your position is on that existing shrub? Is it going to stay there? Well, we're going to probably do, make it nice and we're going to replace it because some of it's not in good condition right now, honestly. Okay. In there like for 20 years okay before we bought it so we would like to just improve it okay i just was curious absolutely well yeah we have a landscaper ready to go harry greenberg from birch hill landscaping in, in milburn town. yeah so we have good intentions on making it even nicer and more private so you're saying that that bush will be replaced everything that's there now are they talking about the dogwood tree there's no, no. Okay. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're going to keep everything as we're going to replace whatever we remove, just newer. The question I had was similar to Gail Fraser's question, and that was, how close is the next door neighbor to the property line between the two houses? Do you know? Yeah, that's a great question. Go out and measure it. We could go out and measure it. <laughs> Just give us an estimate. We're not, she's, the bushes, there's, a, there's bushes on the side of the house. And then there's 15 feet, a 15 foot space between the bushes and her and her bushes, her front back of her house, we face the back, that faces the she back of her house. She has a side yard. She has a side yard. Her house is actually on Exeter and faces the front Andover. of, on Andover and faces the front of Andover. So we face the back, that will push us closer, slightly closer to the back of her house. Do you happen to know her name? Eva, yeah. Eva Barker. Yeah. Okay. I asked only because I wanted to be sure that uh, that I didn't have to recuse myself. Ah. So I, I don't know that woman, but I do know someone who does live on that street. On Andover? Okay. Right, is there, are there any other questions from board members? There are three variances being sought here, but they're all basically size, related to the side yard setback variance. One is on the first floor, one is on the second floor, and the third is uh, the variance for combined side yard. I think we can take these at w in one in one shot, but if somebody disagrees, you can make a motion and limit your motion to whatever you think is appropriate. I just have one question. Yes. The question is, has there been any thought given to the extent that when that second floor is put up on the side, then that is going to change depending on where the sun is, the light that hits to the, the house on the right and goes into their windows. Has there been any thought given to how that may impact them? I honestly don't think it affects the way the light comes in because it's the, the way the light hits our house is it goes it, it goes to the back right if i'm facing my house it goes to the back right corner of the house and we don't really get any direct sunlight into that section of the house so i don't think the additional height is going to affect that at all we have a corner of our house that's already the height of our house already blocks any sun from coming into that section that help? I see what you mean. I mean, it, it does depend. I was kind of looking at that today. So it depends on kind of the angle of the sun, but right, it comes in. It, it, it doesn't come in this way. The sun comes in this way. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from board members? Is there a motion in this case?
I'll move approval. I think it's a modest request and it would add to the um, a modern uh, character of our nature of the house. Second. Was that Steve? Steve Tober, second. Mary McNett? Yes. Jake Butler? Yes. Jody Sharma? Yes. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Blatt? Yes. Joseph Steinberg? Yes. Good luck with the project. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you. With replacing very much. All, that, all that greenery back there. Oh, thank yeah. You. We will be. <laughs> they got okay, it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. This next the, the next and last case for this evening is Ayaji, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, at 102 Cypress Street in Milburn. And this is a retaining wall. <clears throat> is there someone? Hold on one second. We have the Tiagis here. Am I pronouncing the name correctly? Pretty close, yes. It's Tiagi, yeah. very good. Yeah. All right, let's swear the witnesses. Okay, do you swear from the testimony you're about to give tonight be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, state your names for the record. Spelling your names, please. Ankur Tiagi. Yudhika Sharma. We'll have spell to your name. Spell, spell them, please. Yeah, uh, my name is spelled as A N K U R is in red. Last name is Tiagi. T is in Tokyo. Y A G I. And Yubika's name is U is in USA. V I K A. Last name is Sharma. S is in Sam. A is in Henry. A R. A is in America. Okay, tell us, what, what are you Hello. looking for? Sure. Hello, Mr. Steinberg and the board members. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for arranging this. So we got in this situation, we moved to this house about four years back and our retaining wall, it's a 1951 house, I believe, was in a bad state, which was masked with a kind of a scaly plaster in the last year or so, the rain happened so frequently, it started crumbling. And I have a seven-year-old son who plays in the driveway. It became a danger to life and property almost. So it was, you know, we were in a dire situation. We had to replace the retaining wall. And so the, the, the repair is 609.6 that we are asking uh, uh, the front yard wall height needs to be more than two feet in a small section of the wall. Uh, and I'll go about it. So when we are replacing the wall, the old wall used to be crooked. It used to narrow in towards the street. It used, it started at 20 feet next to the garage, but it went narrow to about 14 to 15 feet into the street, which made it, made it very difficult to get in and out and almost uh, uh, unusable. And because it's a old street, it's also a danger to people walking on the street when you cannot see people around. And the reason it was crooked was there used to be a, a town tree at the corner of the street, which was rotten and taken off from the, by the town a few years back. And because the, the tree doesn't exist there anymore, we're increasing the usability of the driveway as well as uh, having the right, right ethics for the house and the street. We proposed to straighten the wall, so we were uh, we are correcting the angle where it was going slant before, and now we are just straightening, straightening it up where it starts same 20 feet at the garage doorway and goes to 19 feet wide at the street entrance. Uh, that's a simple thing. We hired a, a pretty renowned, pretty experienced mason with 25, 30 years of experience, licensed guy, Vicente uh, Henry. And uh, he proposed to do it with uh, 
pretty good company stones as well, Cambridge stones using GeoGrid as well as uh, uh, the, the, the thick fabric to filter out any water or mud, proper gravel base and everything to make it last forever, you know. Uh, and uh, the old wall, even if we repaired it, you know, nobody was willing to give us guarantee even for a year. So, you know, we thought it was prudent for our own property as well as for the aesthetics and uh, the neighborhood to make it right. And uh, that's what we are proposing here. And also the angle where we are correcting, it's going in our own property. It's not going in the, in the neighborhood property or anything like that. Uh, so that's in the nutshell. If you have any questions, I'm very happy. Well, I have one question, Mr. Tiaji. Um, if I read your drawings correctly, there is only a portion of the wall that is going to exceed the two foot requirement. Yes, there's sir. a portion that's three feet and a portion that's four feet. Is that correct? That's right, sir. So it starts up close to four feet, about 40 inches uh, next to the house, uh, right next to the garage. And then it tapers down, you know. So the 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 soil existed before, so we kind of matched it as high the soil was when we cut it across and straightened it up, and it goes almost to the le level of street uh, towards now, that. Here's the here's the here's the issue. Mm -hmm. When our attorney drafts a resolution, yes, sir, uh, she is going to be interested in what portion of this wall is going to actually be subject to a variance. That is to say, what portion of the wall, what length of the wall is going to be at the two foot uh, required height and what portion is going to be three feet and what portion is going to be four feet. Do you happen to have those measurements? Uh, give me one second, sir. I'm looking sure. for it. Where's your time? time? Yes. The number I have are approximate right now. If you need exact numbers, I'll have to measure it and send it to you, if that's okay. But approximately four feet at the start of the garage is about 15 feet length of the wall. Then it goes to three and a half feet for roughly uh, another 15 feet of the wall. And then it comes down less than two feet and so, so on. And towards the entrance of the street, there is no height of the wall. All right, Gail, this is really a question for you. Do you have enough to draw a resolution here? I think I'll be able to come up with something. Okay. Now, Mr. Yuji, I'm gonna ask you to repeat what you just said one more time. The, the last thing about the length of the wall or? Yes. Yes, sir. So at the end, at the, where the house starts, right next to the garage, it's about four feet in height there. Uh, and the length is 15 feet. And about then- 15 feet, Approximately 15 feet will be four feet in height. Is yes, that sir. correct? Yes, sir. And then? Then it goes to three and a half feet for another 15 feet. Okay. Wall is less than two feet. And right. so the balance going out to the street, going out to the street 
does not require a variance. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Correct. And the photograph included with the application, the closer you get to the street, the wall reduces to a height of one foot. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Are there any other questions from board members? Is there anyone in the audience, Eileen, who has a uh, who's here on this case? No. There had been somebody in the audience earlier when we started. I, I wonder who that person was. I think that was uh, me. I, 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 I was checking my connection. Oh, okay. That was you. Okay. Any other questions from board members? And for so, me, what, for we're, me. what we're voting on here is approximately 15 feet of the retaining wall will be at a four foot height where two feet is the maximum permitted in the zone. And about 15 feet more will be at approximately three feet in height, which is again in excess of the two foot maximum in the zone. The balance of the wall will be at two feet or less. So it will not require a variance going out to the street. My only comment on this case is that this is the most uh, steep section of Milburn Township. So that, uh, that uh, the uh, angle of that um, hill from, well, it's actually really from the uh, border between Maplewood and Milburn Township all the way up to the top of the houses that are on the west side of, um, What's that street at the top, Mary? Sagamore Road. Sagamore Road. Those, that's, that hill is extraordinarily steep. And it is not surprising to me that somebody does require a retaining wall. And I think that given the nature of the type of street it is and the hill that it's on, uh, the the uh, additional two feet and one foot uh, will really not uh, be noticeable to anybody. So I would be myself in favor of this application, but does anyone on the board have any comment you would like to make? I just have one question. This is partially, I think, a question for Eileen, because I do see in the comment section on attachment B that um, Eileen noted that the peers must be on their property and they're being shown in the township right of way. Is there something that needs to be addressed in the resolution? With no, we can't do anything on those because they're in the township right of way. So they can't be there unless the township allows it. You're talking about the stairs? No, the peers. He had peers that were going to be. Um, can I add a comment here, uh, Mr. Steinberg, please? Pardon me. Can I add a can I add a statement there? What we talked about? Absolutely. So you know, just to be sure, whatever we were doing was under you know whatever was recommended from the town. I specifically asked uh, you know uh, Christine from uh, from the grading uh, engineering department to come uh, come to our property and help us. And she ex explicitly marked it that, you know, if you are going to keep it within two feet height and that's part of the wall, you can build the piers. And, and we are much more set back than the property on the left and right, which have piers as well. But ours, what she recommended it, you know, as long as you keep it two feet and, you know, uh, and she marked it, you know, you keep it five feet from the street, but we are, ours is more than five feet. And the other peers on the left and right, they have, I believe they're within three feet or so from the street. But in future, if there's any problem, you know, we are happy to take it out. But we did whatever the engineering department 
uh, gave us the grant too. Like we are not blocking anything from the street. We are not blocking any right of way or any uh, vehicles or anything. We, you know, I was very, very diligent. We have lost a lot of time, effort and money with, with this thing, which was unnecessary. My wife lost her job with COVID, but I had to spend money on this. And, uh, you know, our green, you probably saw at probably $3,000, $4,000 worth of my green tree shrubs, which died because I wanted to replant them. But there was issue with the township, you know, with my permit. And it took a long time and all those things died. Now, I have to spend time and money to dispose those as well. But at the same time, I didn't want any, uh, you know, sort of issue with the town. So I went there at least four or five times. And then I specifically asked Christine to come twice to my property to guide the mason to actually put the markers where we can build the wall, where we are going to match with the ground and the piers, how, what height they can be, and they're not blocked. Uh, actually, now that you, uh, Mr. Tiagi, I, Christine Bugle, who is an assistant engineer, she did talk to me and she had been out to the site. Um, and based on uh, discussions with her, as well as with the business administrator uh, and the distance that Christine did request that they come back off the street, um, you know, I don't believe they had any issue with it. We're certainly not going to address it in our resolution because it's not part of the parameter of mm -hmm. us, but I believe um, he's correct that he did speak to the engineer and this has been vetted through the business administrator. So I think they're all comfortable with uh, the peers as they're now proposed. Thank you, appreciate it. Right, and, and as you said, Eileen, it won't really matter because we're not granting a variance. Correct, correct. So I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> For the record, I just want the record to reflect that the Historic Preservation Commission issued a certificate of appropriateness because the property is in the Wyoming Historic District. Thank you. Are there any other comments from board members? Or is there a motion? I move approval of calendar 3762-20. Is there a second? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Mary McNett? Yes. Craig Plettner? Yes. Jody Sharma? Yes. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Blatt? Yes. Joseph Steinberg? Yes. With the project. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, is there anyone else on the board who has any comments they would like to make tonight before we, I entertain a motion to adjourn? Well, I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving because we're not going to see each other again, are we? Oh, maybe we are. Uh, we yeah, do we, have a, Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. New Jersey Energy. On the, on, okay. the, on the 16th. Okay. And we have a pretty important uh, mm -hmm. case on the 16th. You're right. Is there a motion to uh, to adjourn? So moved. Is second, there a second? Second, second. This is historic, 7.55 p.m. I know. <laughs> All in favor, raise I your hand. I... <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.